A while back, I recorded a tutorial for an add-on called Light Wrangler. This is a really cool lighting add-on that allows you to interactively place lights on a model. Since then, the developer has added some features and made some adjustments that really improve it, and I felt it warranted recording a new tutorial to show those features. Let's jump in really quickly and re-demonstrate what Light Wrangler does. We're going to note that there are no lights in the scene. We don't have any energy applied to the global lighting environment, and I don't have any other lights in the scene. So when we turn on the ray tracer, nothing is there. So what I'm going to do is click on the object that I want to highlight. I actually have its interactivity turned off in here so that that doesn't get in the way visually. I'm going to right click, bring up the context menu, and then invoke add a light. The light operations menu is added by Light Wrangler, just easy at the top. Come over here and it allows us to add lights anywhere on the scene where I move the mouse and it figures out where to place the light in order to get that illumination there. Its core function is really quite simple. Once I've placed that light, as long as it's selected, I can bring up the context menu again and then do an adjust light and I can pick it back up and just begin to move it around the object in order to place that light into a new location. So let's take a look at another feature that's been added to it since the original release. We're going to note with the light selected, there's a node set up. And inside of this, this is a node grouping that has a very complex setup. It allows us to change the color temperature using black body values. It has feathering and horizontal tilt and vertical tilt. Those are more esoteric. We're not going to cover those here. But if we come down to the lighting data object properties, we can scroll down to the bottom and light customization is another entry that's part of it. Right now it's called scrim. This is the default value. But if we come over and make a change, let's make a change to the material system for our object that will allow us to reflect that area light more clearly, it's going to allow us to see what this next change is. So I'm going to come down to this goldish material and we're going to come to coat and we're going to turn on a coating so that we can really clearly see a sharp reflection of the light itself. So let's come back over. In fact, I'm going to maybe adjust, let's select the light. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit to bring it maybe right about there. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see this. In fact, I think I'm going to come over and I'm going to adjust the area light size just a little bit more so that this is really apparent. What I want to do is come over to HDRI and this is going to allow us to change the appearance of the light itself as if you were in a studio and had different types of studio lights available casting light onto your object. So for instance, I could come over here and just change it to a different type and really significantly sort of change. Let's do, let's do that one right there. And you can see that show up and then we can just do our adjust light option and we can see that travel around the scene. It's, it's quite an awesome feature. So in this car scene, it, it's just fun to play with this because you can so easily interactively adjust an existing light and look at how you can just really quickly change the lighting appearance just by moving the cursor or the mouse across the screen. But we could also come to, the, let's say, this big light right here. We could change it from its default sort of uniform state over to an HDRI, something like this large studio area light. It changes the uniformity of that light so it's a little bit more subtle something that you would actually get in kind of in a photographic environment because those area lights are not completely uniform in their uh, illumination. So this is where we could come over and I have assigned a keyboard command to it. So I can just point the mouse, let's say, I think the intersection is right there, option, question mark, and then I can just move that around the scene until I get something that I basically kind of like. But changing these, to something different is so easy and it can change just the appearance of those area lights quite easily. So let's take a look at one of the new light casting features that I mentioned. In order to understand this, we first have to understand that for a lot of surfaces, we're working with the diffuse surface 
and we're also working with a glossy surface, where the glossy surface tends to show the specular highlight. The way that light interacts with that specular highlight is different than the way the light tends to interact with the diffuse component. And where you place the light to get maximum diffuse illumination is going to be different than where you place the light to maximize the specular highlight. That is what the mechanism now takes into account. So let's come over here and add a light. The, the process that you want to do here, you can see when I turn on the ray tracer, I've turned off all of the lights, is you first want to establish the scale of your scene. I've got the 3D cursor in the location. So what I'm going to do is press Shift A. I will add a circle there, and the circle is going to, um, actually, I think that's pretty good, maybe just a little bit smaller. I want to get the radius of that. So N key, and then we come down and look at the dimension. So uh, roughly 20 inches, and the radius of that would be 10 inches. So I'm going to delete that. It's just a reference object. When I click over here, I'm going to first bring up the preference because I want to set the the initial light distance. So it's relative to my scene. So I'm going to do actually 15 inches. But now that I know what it is that I'm working with in terms of the scale of the scene, I can make an intelligent choice about the size of things. And this, for the initial size, which we can change after the fact, I'm going to take it to 10 inches. For the initial light power, for a small scale scene like this, I'm actually going to take it down to 3 watts. If you've got very, very large sizes like the car scene, you'll tend to want to set that a little bit higher because the larger that the area light goes, that's the total power that's being emitted from the total area of the light. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn on the ray tracer, come over here, bring up the context menu, and then do an add light. And there we can see that begin to cast illumination. So what it's doing in this default mode, this is the original mode, is it's preferentially putting the specular highlight under the cursor's location. Okay, so that is what the default behavior is. But what if you have seen like this where you've got surfaces that do have specular highlight, but they're primarily defined by their diffuse component? Well, this is where we would use the second mode. If I come in and re-invoke Adjust Light, let's come back over here and move the cursor over that location. If I press the 3 key, it's going to change the mode so that the light is going to maximally cast diffuse illumination over the object. Now, this is where I could come over here. I think even 3 is way too bright, obviously. And we could also make a change to the distance of the light, but its location was put there in order to produce maximum amount of illumination at the diffuse level, not the specular level, even though we still are getting a specular highlight. So if I come back in and I want to readjust it, and I can just hit the tab key to automatically jump into position mode, and then to go back to the default specular emphasis mode, I would tap the one key, and there it puts us back into specular emphasis. If I press the tab key, it jumps us back into reposition mode. And there is another way of then taking and manually moving the light around the scene, regardless of whether you're in specular or diffuse emphasis mode. Press the two key, and it takes that intersection point where the cursor is and the light, and allows you to simply pivot the light around that anchor point, and very easily make these lighting adjustments just by moving the cursor around. Just use, I'm on a laptop and I'm just using one finger to move this light around the scene. There's another little hidden feature that will also improve uh, moving the light around. So I'm going to press the tab key because I want to move it across the screen. But when you start moving it around, it can really flash, you know, as it's tracking across all of these surfaces. And that can be kind of painful. So let's say I've got it right there. Tap the P key and it pauses the tracking so you can move the mouse across the screen and then get to where about is you want and then tap the P key again and it will pop it right over there. So P key, move it about right here and then put it right there. That just sort of helps visually from an artistic standpoint so you're not overwhelming your brain with all of 
that feedback. It's a small thing, but I kind of like it as a feature. So let's take a look at the new mode. It's called normal mode. The first thing that we want to do is simply add a reference object into the scene, just allowing us to know where to place that our, our light relative to this scene. So I put the circle in here and we can see if with the N key, it's 66 inches. So I'm going to press the X key to delete that. And when we bring up the context menu and to preferences, we would find the radius of that circular form. And I'm going to put in 35 inches, just roughly half of the value that we saw right there. And then uh, the initial light size, we're going to just leave it 30 inches. Initial power at 5 watts, pretty good. So let's come in N key to remove that panel. Now, since we don't have any lights, I'm going to select my lights collection there. Turn on interactive rendering, nothing happens. I want to select this so that I can see it just for reference purposes for my, so I know where to click. Bring up the context menu and we'll add a light. And there we go. So by default, it's wanting to produce the specular illumination. So it's placing the light at an inverse angle to the click point, meaning the ray cast from the camera intersects the click point and it knows to put the light at an inverse angle to the incoming angle. But we want to change to normal mode because normal mode will preferentially produce greater diffuse illumination. So press the three key and move around and then we get normal mode. So this is going to produce better diffuse illumination. In fact, when we look at the side, you can see how that light is basically putting itself perpendicular to that flat side face. And so that's what normal mode has done. It aligns the light to a normal at the click point on the surface, and that produces maximal diffuse illumination. So if I press the one key and go back to specular mode, now it's going to produce maximum specular illumination. Now, the cool thing is, if I press 3 again, let's go back to normal mode. At any time, you can press 2 for orbit mode, and that will then allow you to just manually rotate the light around the scene like this with it anchored to that click point. And you can do that in either default mode or normal mode. So, what he's done, what the developer has done, is made it really easy. Let's add a new light. Let's uh, add a light down here. Maybe this one I like to have specular mode because that's a little bit more dramatic for what we're doing right here. And maybe I'd like a little bit more frontal illumination so we could add a light here. But in this case, I would go to three mode and then I can put that up about like that. And maybe for this, I would like this to be a little bit farther away. So I'd press G key and then Z twice. And then I can move that away just to produce a little bit of illumination. And the great thing is, let's come down here. In fact, I'm going to pick the side light. I'm going to pick, uh, let's pick this side light right here. And I want to change the color temperature to 4000 to make it a little bit warmer. And then this light coming from the back that's producing more of the specular, I'm going to take this up to 7500 to make it cooler. And then this light, which is up at the top, we're going to leave at the more neutral 5500. And that produces a really nice warm tone with cool highlights to it. So this is a great and easy lighting tool that you can use. It's not too expensive and it really adds fast and easy illumination for your scene. So I hope you found this to be a useful introduction to the latest version of Light Wrangler.